This video is about problem solving using kinematics and freefall. Freefall is a term used to describe any object that's moving under the influence of gravity. In this particular problem, we're going to talk about an object that's going straight up and straight down. So we can take our kinematics equations and apply it to the motion. But there are a couple of implied givens you should be aware of. Here's an object that's dropped, and the acceleration is going down because that's going to be the direction of the pull of gravity. As it falls, it's going to speed up. It's going to go faster and faster downwards in a negative direction. Then it's going to go up and it's going to slow down what we're going to call the positive direction. Notice briefly at the top the velocity disappears because at the top, for a small instant in time, the velocity is zero at the very top. So when it falls, the acceleration is increasing the speed, making it more and more negative on the way down. So whenever the velocity and acceleration go the same direction, it speeds up. On the way up, when the velocity and acceleration go in opposite directions, the acceleration is slowing it down. In other words, it's reducing the velocity on the way up, or it's becoming less positive on the way up. On the way down, because the acceleration goes down, it becomes more negative. Now the acceleration is due to gravity, and gravity always goes down, and you cannot turn off gravity. So the acceleration is always um, the acceleration due to gravity, and it's always going to be negative. So let's look at the problem solving and how it applies. First, let's look at the word problem, what it might say. The problem might say something like this. A cannon shoots a ball upwards at 10 meters per second, and then some other stuff happens. But this is the phrase you're looking for. The cannonball shoots a shot upwards at 10 meters per second. Upwards is the initial direction, and it's under the influence of gravity once it leaves the cannon. So it's in free fall once it leaves the cannon. Even though it's not falling, it's still under the influence of gravity. So here's a little animation to kind of show you what it's talking about. And when it comes to problem solving this and listing my givens to figure out where to go, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and say, all right, it's got an initial velocity of 10 meters per second, and it's going upwards. So I'm going to define upwards as the positive direction and make it a positive 10 meters per second. Gravity always goes down, so the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, when we're talking about gravity on the surface of the Earth, we're always going to make it 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we're dealing with kinematics, that is this motion in a straight line like this, I'm always going to make it negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So with kinematics, I'm going to make it negative because it's always going down. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the initial velocity, according to our method of solution, we're always going to make the starting point equal to zero. Even though the cannon's a little bit above the height of the ground, unless it says otherwise, we're going to neglect the height of the cannon. So for all practical purposes, the cannon is just right even with the ground when the motion started. So x naught equals zero. Now let's look at a problem where the cannon is held up really high and aimed downwards. So the word problem might look something like this. A cannon shoots a ball down at 10 meters per second. And here's what the animation would look like for that problem. So if we're looking at the list of givens, I know initially the ball goes down when it leaves the cannon. So that mean, means it's going in the negative direction, so the initial velocity is negative 10 meters per second. The acceleration is due to gravity, and that always goes down, so that's also going to be negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the fact that it's always 9.8 meters per second squared is kind of a, a mystery right now. We'll describe it later when we talk about forces, and we'll describe why that's true. For right now, just accept that there's no air resistance, nothing else acting on it, and it's always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared on the surface of the Earth. In the initial position, x naught is equal to zero. Except that location is not on the ground, this time it's up in the air where the cannon is. So the initial position is going to be zero. Wherever our motion is going to start, we're going to make the math really easy by making that equal to zero. Now let's, con let's consider a third situation. Let's say a ball is dropped, and then some other stuff happens. So in the word problem, it would say a ball is dropped, or an object is dropped, a person is dropped, something is dropped, dropped being the key word. Here's what the motion looks like. So you can see how it goes down. In terms of our givens, when we're looking at a list of givens, we can see the initial velocity is zero. Because the hand at the top is not pushing it up, and it's not pushing it down, it's just letting it go. So initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And x naught is zero. In other words, x naught is the very top. That's where we start measuring, and that's going to be zero. So what are some of the takeaways? Well, in this problem, whenever it says dropped, you always have these implied givens. The problem's not going to give any unit clues. It's not going to tell you the initial velocity is zero. It's not going to tell you the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But when it says dropped, you always know these values are true in your list of givens. So with free fall, there's some implied givens. If an object is free fall that is under the motion of gravity, when we're looking at our givens, we know the acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know anything about the velocity yet or anything else. And if the problem goes so far as to say the object is dropped, using the word dropped in the description, 
We know with our givens what we just discussed. We know that the initial velocity is zero and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared.